Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back. It is July 19th. So on this episode, we're going to talk about something that happened today that I had previously mentioned was bad news. I want to tell you what came out of that meeting that happened today and then look at the future meetings that we're still expecting to happen. And then we're going to end this thing with two good pieces of news, the best piece of news I'm going to say for last. And then after that, I'm going to take a look at the Dogecoin chart and then just share with you what I'm expecting to see in the next month or two. So starting with the bad news first, which was actually a meeting that took place today and is tied to a list that CNBC just put out a couple of days ago, their top six news stories in crypto this week. And you can see the number one story, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell calls for more stablecoin regulation. If you're a subscriber of this channel, you've already seen this video because I showed it to you already, where he said that he was looking into more regulation and he was actually going to come out with a report in September about this. This. That's actually pretty big news for cryptocurrencies. But at the bottom here, you can see it's on Friday, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said she'd meet with the president's working group on financial markets on Monday to discuss the roles stable coins could play in the financial system. So what came out of that meeting today? Well, you can see here from Market Watch, the nation's top financial regulators met today to discuss stable coins with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, emphasizing the need to act quickly to ensure there is an appropriate U.S. regulatory framework in place for these digital assets, the Treasury Department said in a release. Now, they're primarily looking at stable coins, which are generally coins that are going to be tied to U.S. currency in this case. But undoubtedly, they're going to be looking at Bitcoin and altcoins like Dogecoin as well under this regulatory framework. And so what I mentioned to you is probably the worst news right now for cryptocurrencies. And the reason for most of the fear, uncertainty and doubt we're seeing is that we have world governments that are looking way too close into cryptocurrencies right now. In the United States of America, we have the United States uh, Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, who is doing that. And that was her meeting today in which they said they need to look for a regulatory framework for these stable coins, which undoubtedly means the same thing for all the other coins. We also see Jerome Powell, the United States federal chair, saying he's going to come out with a report. And we also see the Congress of the United States wanting to get a report from the Security and Exchange Commissions, which will happen on July 28th. And all of these things really encompass the worst of the news for cryptocurrencies. But on the good side, I believe all of this is going to come to nothing. Like, for example, if somebody thought today's meeting Janet Yellen, United States Secretary of the Treasury, was actually going to result in something, oh no, are they going to bring the hammer down? They didn't do anything today. They just talked about stuff. And guess what's going to happen when the SEC goes to Congress on July 28th? They're not going to do anything. They're just going to talk about stuff. And what about Jerome Powell's report in September? I don't think it's going to result in anything. And so the good news is, although all of this oversight and regulatory framework talk has a lot of investors scared right now, people selling off and not a lot of people investing, once all of this comes to absolutely nothing, I think we're going to be cool. And I think things are going to get right back on the right direction because basically the air is going to clear once again until it doesn't clear again. And then the United States ta- starts talking about these things again. And now onto the good news. Let's start with this and I'll give you the best good news right afterwards. Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood all confirmed to speak at Bitcoin 2021 event on July 21st. We already knew this was a thing, but of course, Elon Musk is going to be speaking there. Jack Dorsey, who is the CEO of Square, co-founder of Twitter, Kathy Wood, Arc, uh, Invest. And we know that Elon Musk is going to be talking about Bitcoin altcoin. Dogecoin. It is the Bitcoin 2021 event. We also know he's going to be meeting, talking with Bitcoin co-founders, and there's going to be a lot to do there. And so there's a lot of interest in what's going to come out of this. And uh, hopefully it'll be really, you know, some serious talk, serious connection going on. And we might see some strength being produced there from the leaders in the cryptocurrency uh, arena, altcoin arena, the whole thing. I mean, hopefully there's some camaraderie and coming together there, especially looking at all of the regulation that's, you know, supposedly coming down the line from the governments of the world, including the United States government. And now on to the really good news. This was put out yesterday by Ross Nicall, who is one of the lead developers right now for Dogecoin. Check out what he said. On the 28th of July um, at 10 a.m. UK time, 
I've announced I have Oscar, who is the Dogecoin Ethereum bridge, joining me on stream. But I also have Vitalik. Yes, that Vitalik. The lead of Ethereum will be joining Oscar and I and Soma Green on stream uh, to talk about the Doge Ethereum bridge and just talk about Ethereum and Dogecoin and why Ethereum likes Dogecoin and Dogecoin likes Ethereum. That is actually huge. So on July 28th, the same exact day that Congress is going to be hearing from the Security and Exchange Commission on their regulation advice on cryptocurrencies, Ross Nicole on his stream is going to be hosting Oscar, who's in charge of the development of the Dogecoin Ethereum bridge that we already talked about. This is a real thing. It's actually happening in the upcoming developments. But he's also going to have Vitalik Buterin, who is one of the co-founders of Ethereum on that stream as well. And he said specifically, they're going to talk about why Dogecoin likes Ethereum and why Ethereum likes Dogecoin. So Ross Nicole leads developer of the Dogecoin team, Oscar, who is the middleman creating the Dogecoin Ethereum bridge, and one of the co-founders and, and lead developers of Ethereum all on the same stream on July 28th. That is huge because it, it's, it is still speculation, but it just means that these guys, they're connecting with each other. They're starting to figure out we're stronger together. We're stronger when we're not fighting with each other, when we're Figuring out, wait a second, Ethereum does some things that are really good. It really does. I mean, Ethereum's development is phenomenal, but Dogecoin does some things that's really good as well. And so there's some benefit between the two of them coming together and working together. And hopefully that stream is going to be really interesting. So if you want to know what comes of that stream, uh, subscribe to this channel. I will be watching it. I'll probably be showing you some of the really important parts of that stream. So if you want to see that, it's huge news for Dogecoin because a Dogecoin Ethereum bridge, merger, connection, whatever you want to call it, is massive. And I think they can take the best quality of each and bring them together. And as promised, I said I was going to end here by telling you what I think is going to happen the next month or two with Dogecoin and some really important things are coming up. So you can see on today, Dogecoin is down about 2.87%, which is not bad. It's keeping right in line with the other major players. Ethereum is down 3.61%. Bitcoin is down for the day 2.15%. It's always important to look at, at the other players, Bitcoin and other major altcoins, because if they're all around the same range that means they're all performing the same some people will hate on dogecoin and say oh look how bad dogecoin is while bitcoin's doing equally as bad and so that leads me now to telling you what i think is going to happen in the upcoming months we need to draw back out to the three month uh, chart here you can see starting on june 2nd this is where we began to see this line of declination that became very apparent right now there's a lot of people out there who will give you their charts and they'll give you these flag poles and different things and they'll predict stuff which never happens the only time that it they say it happened is after something occurs then they try to tell you that they got it right right lines of declination or, or incline that are consistent over long periods of time are predictors. So we would expect to follow this line of declination and then begin to go horizontal after some time. That would be the hope. I do believe that we're going to begin to start going horizontal. I think this line of declination is going to end right around August 5th. The reason I believe so is because the government regulatory oversight commissions and hearings are the biggest fear, uncertainty, and doubt out there. And once the July 28th Security Exchange Commission's report with Congress is over and you give it a week, I believe things will go very horizontal by that point. That's important because horizontal movement sets you up for when things get healthy again. And when are things going to get healthy and bullish again? I, at this point, don't see them getting healthy and bullish again until after Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, his report in September, because this is another government regulatory oversight of cryptocurrencies, altcoins, stablecoins, whatever you want to say, and big time investors investors are not going to get in until after this stuff is done. Now, it, it does seem that I keep pushing back the timeline of when things are going to get healthy. And if you're a subscriber to this channel, you could definitely call me out on that. You could say, Vin, you start, you said that you thought July was going to be the time period. Yeah. Here's the problem. I can't predict 
all of these government oversight meetings and hearings that are going to happen. Who knew Janet Yellen was going to have a meeting today? The Secretary of the Treasury of the United States of America. Nobody knew that. She announced it last week. Who knew that Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, was going to be coming out with a report in September? No one knew that. He announced it last week. I showed it here on this channel. And even Senator Warren calling for the SEC about a month ago, no more time than July 28th to give her a report. These things, as so could there be another government oversight regulatory meeting in October? There could be. I hope there's not one. But if there isn't one, I think we go horizontal by August 5th. We stay stable, probably right around 17 cents, maybe 18 cents. It could be 16.5, but in that area. And after Jerome Powell's report, by the way, all of these things, which I think are going to come to nothing, once it's done, and the air is clear, and there's no more regulatory meetings that are scheduled down the line, hopefully, and that's going to be a part of my prediction here, if there's another one that comes up, you can't hold me to this, but if there isn't one, and we stop seeing these governments of the world producing these regulations on cryptocurrencies, if that ends by the end of September, I think we're going to see great things. I really do. That's when I think it's going to happen. But again, only if the oversight, the regulatory commissions start to end as well. And that news begins to dissipate. That's what I'm predicting here. And so if things get bullish and if there is no news stories at that point, um, you're going to th see things pump up big time. But you're going to have to stay up to date on the news stories in order to know for sure. That's why I would suggest maybe subscribing to the channel because we look at some things in a little bit of a different way than many of the other channels do out there. And I think it could be helpful for you. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. As always, I will catch you next time.